The first question you sent says that a store is having a sale on chocolate chips and walnuts. So let's use the letter C to be um, the cost for chocolate chips and W is the cost, the price of walnuts. And it says 12 pounds of chocolate chips and two pounds of walnuts, the cost is $23. So if that's the cost of chocolate chips and you get 12 pounds, then 12 times the cost, that's how much you'd pay for the 12 pounds of chocolate chips. And you're buying two pounds of walnuts, so two pounds times the cost per pound of wal cost <laughs> cost per pound of walnuts. That would equal your total cost, and it says that's twenty three dollars. And then for for three pounds of chocolate chips, so three times the cost of chocolate chips uh, plus five pounds of walnuts, it tells you that the total cost is seventeen dollars. So that's how you would set up those two equations and you can solve these with substitution, elimination, or graphing. And I'm actually going to just show it with uh, graphing quick because I think one of your other questions was about graphing as well. So I, I went to Desmos graphing calculator. I just googled that desmos.com slash calculator. Great online graphing calculator. You can also use any graphing calculator you want. But we're going to just plot these two lines and see where they intersect. That's how you solve with graphing. Now, um, Desmos only lets you use X and Y, so uh, I'll just use X for my first one and Y for my second one. Uh, so 12X plus 2Y equal 23. That's our first line. And then 3X plus 5Y equals 17. So just these two equations, I've changed X for Y instead of C for chocolate chips and W for our walnuts. But now we can see where they intersect. Um, and it's not a nice whole value. It's 1.5 and 2.5, which that, that's uh, completely, um, that answer makes sense in the context of our problem. The price is $1.50 for the chocolate chips, a pound of chocolate chips, and $2.50 for a pound of the walnuts. So I see another question you sent was um, graph. And write the solution and it, it gave you two equations you could again just do it on Gres Desmos graphing calculator you can do um, your own graphing calculator to find the solution but just type these two equations in and see where the lines cross now it also wanted you to graph it in the um, uh, in Alex to get your solution here so I mean, just, just to do that, if you're drawing the line in there, it's easiest to write it in slope-intercept form like this. You have to plot two points and then connect those points with the line, and you have the graph of the line. So your first point is always whatever that y-intercept is. So uh, it says the y-intercept is 1 if I'm graphing a second line. So you just go up, and your first point on the y-axis is just that 1 because that's the y-intercept. And then you use the slope to find your second point. It's like a road map. The slope is one half. The top number tells you how far up or down to go. It's positive, so we're going up. And then the bottom number tells you how far right. So up one, right two. From that y-intercept, from that first point, you're going to go up one and right two, and you'd get your second point. And then if you just draw a straight line through those two points, there's, there's a button to click in Alex that draws a straight line. But that's how you would graph a line. And then you can do that with your second equation, the same method, just get y by itself so it's in slope-intercept form. So you're going to add x to both sides. Let me get rid of these c's and w's from the previous question. Uh, so if you add x to both sides, you'd have 2y equals x. And then divide both sides by 2. y equals, so x divided by 2, so 1x, so divided by 2 would be 1 half x. Uh, you can always, if there's no number there, it's 1 times x. When you divide by 2, you get 1 half. And so our y-intercept here, the number added on is 0. There's, there's nothing there. So again, if we're graphing that, that's where we start. And our first point on the y-axis is 0, right there in the very middle. And then our, our uh, what is it? Our roadmap here, our slope is the same. It's 1 half. So from that point, we go up one, right two, and get 
our second point. And you could again draw them there. Now, if you notice, both these lines have the same exact slope, one half. So they're going in the same angle. They're not touching ever because they run right along next to each other the whole time. They're parallel lines like railroad tracks. So in this case, there would be no solution. Anytime your lines don't cross, it means there's no solution. So, um, scenarios and kind of like terminology here. And, and so it gave you some pictures and I want you to describe them. So um, let me get these pictures pulled up for the three possible possible scenarios. And so what we have kind of talked through here is this bottom where two lines are crossing each other. And that's just our typical scenario. Uh, let me actually copy that over. All right, so I've copied that over here so I can mark it up a little bit. But when two lines cross, there's one point where they intersect. So there's one unique solution that you can find. Now we call that a consistent system. That means the lines cross. They cross somewhere. It's consistent. And we also call it independent. That means we have two different lines. So that, that's really what you need to know about the terminology. Those are what consistent and independent mean. And so in that problem you sent me, you also see a problem like this. Oops. And it looks like this. It's like that example I just did. Two railroad tracks that never cross, two parallel lines. And so it would be... Um, independent but with rail with with railroad tracks with parallel lines they're definitely different lines since they are parallel to one another and they definitely do not cross so that's really what we just focus on is that they don't cross we call that system inconsistent consistent means they cross inconsistent means they do not cross and the final uh, oh and so there's no solution if they don't cross there's no solution the final scenario you can have that you saw in that problem looks something like this. It looks like just one line's being drawn, and that's because the two lines are exactly the same. They lay right on top of each other. So it is consistent. The lines cross. They touch everywhere. But it would be called dependent. If independent means you have two different lines, dependent means you have that one line. Uh, both lines are the same. You really just have one line. So this type of system would be consistent, they cross, but it's dependent. And there's infinitely many solutions because every point on one line is also on the other line. So there's infinite uh, number of points where they cross. And the last question was about two companies. Um, the end of it might be cut off a little bit, but I think I can make out most of the numbers. They're trying to choose who to transport their sugar to market. And the first company charges a certain amount a flat fee or something and that's the I might, number I might not be able to see but so their total cost we'll just call the total cost Y is the flat fee which is 2103 or something like that and then $50.25 for each ton of sugar um, so 50.25 and X will be our tons of sugar so 50.25 times X now normally when we write a Write equations, we do the x part first and add on the constant. So let's go ahead and write it like that. Um, so 50.25 times x, I'll just put that in parentheses, 50.25 x plus their flat fee. And that number I might have got a little bit wrong. I can't really see, but you get the constant. The second company does not charge, but then they charge 225 for each ton of sugar. So there's no flat fee. So plus zero there for the flat fee, or you could just not write that. You don't have to write plus zero. Um, but here's the two prices for these two companies. You got two equations. You can solve this with elimination, substitution, or graphing. You want to see where those lines cross. The questions are, for what amount of sugar do the two companies charge the same? So that's the intersection solved by graphing. And you'll get the point where they cross, x, y. That X value is the amount of sugar. X is standing for the amount of sugar. And then it says, what is the cost when they charge the same? Same, and that's the Y value of our solution. The Y is the cost in this scenario. 
So I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any other questions.